Today is another day of working on the scamp. We've been putting a lot of time and effort into the scamp over the past several weeks, really probably like months now. The whole purpose of this was that, I mean, we had time because it was quarantine, so it was a good use of time and we wanted to take really good care of the scamp, but we also wanted to try renting out the scamp. And right now, as this is actually getting closer, I'm, I'm pretty nervous about it. There's a lot of concerns that I have, especially because this is our first time handing the scamp over to somebody. It's, it's a little bit scary, to be honest. This weekend, the main focus is I have to get everything super clean, super organized, and we have to create a video walkthrough to help the people who are renting the scamp to understand how to use all the systems. How to turn the fridge on and off, how to use the hot water heater, how the shower works, all that kind of stuff. So that'll be a separate video if you're interested in kind of the inner workings of the scamp. We'll have a full walkthrough video of that, but today and tomorrow are like the, um, the last two days that we really have to work on before the scamp gets rented. We put the scamp up on RV Share, and after I put the pictures with the interior redone, we had the next two weeks booked within a couple of days. So I actually had to block out some of it so that we could use the scamp ourselves. So it's nice that there's such a, a demand for it that people are really interested in it. I know if I saw a scamp for rent, I would want to rent it and use it for a trip. I struggled for a while trying to get the mattress protector on the cushions and we have two egg crates on our cushions but if you've ever tried to make a bed in a camper you know exactly what this is like. All right the mattress protector is finally on sort of. When I went on the scamp forums to see what size sheets are actually supposed to fit on the scamp and I mean the back corners are rounded so it's not going to fit any regular sheet. And people kept saying that they put twin sheets on here. I have no idea how you fit a twin sheet on here. I, I really can't figure that out. Um, this is a full and it fits pretty well. I think I just don't like the, the material that this is made of. I'm not crazy about it. Amazon lost my order for the original one. So I had to run out to Target and get this one kind of last minute. So I don't, I don't love it, but it fits and it was the only full-size mattress protector that they had, so it will work for now. I think what I have to do right now is probably the most inconvenient part about renting this camp, which is getting all of our stuff out of the cabinets and closets and cleaning out all the things that we leave in here so that if we're going somewhere we can just have it ready to go, like our toiletries, um, I keep some canned food in the lower cabinet. All that stuff has to come out, all of our plates and dishes, because the person who's renting is not going to be using that, which is good. Uh, keeps it a little bit cleaner. We don't have to rewash all of our dishes when they give it back to us. But I think it is going to be a little bit of a pain that when we want to use the scamp, we're going to have to take all of our stuff and like repack it. But We'll see. If we don't like it, then we'll stop renting and uh, that'll be fine. But it's something that we kind of wanted to try. After I have all this stuff out, I am going to do a really thorough, like a more thorough clean. I've been cleaning it all the way along, but just from walking in and out, the floor gets pretty dirty. So I'll give that a good clean. I also have a couple other things that I need to Mod Podge, uh, like that door right there, one of the little utility doors. And the inside of this closet right here is going to have a map of Shenandoah National Park, one of my favorite, favorite places. So that's the project for today. I think a lot of the things that we're worried about right now are like your standard things that you would think of if you're going to hand your trailer over to pretty much a stranger. We're just concerned, you know, if they're going to take good care of it, if they're going to know how to drive with it safely, um, making sure that all the systems are working well so that nothing goes wrong on their trip. Uh, that's been a big concern of mine. And um, we've had a couple of little things that we had to fix. The drain in the shower was acting up and we figured out that 
any dirt or anything that you track in on your shoes when you're going to the bathroom, like when you walk in from outside, was falling down into the drain of the shower and clogging it. So the pump was running well, but it wasn't creating any suction to actually take the water out of the bottom of the shower. So um, Patrick took that apart the other day to fix it and that's working great now, but I have to try to figure out a way to make sure that that doesn't happen again because especially if people are using it in a camping situation, you're gonna be walking in and out using the bathroom um, and we wanna make sure that the shower is going to work well for people. So lots of, lots of little things that we're trying to get kind of squared away and I keep telling myself that the first time we do this is gonna be the hardest because that's what everybody else said. The first time you hand over your trailer, um, it's the most uncomfortable. And then after that, supposedly it gets a little bit easier. So that's what I'm hoping. We also just recently signed up for Harvest Hosts, which we're really curious about. We just wanna see how well it works for us. I know for certain people, they really enjoy it and um, of course, we love farms, so I think that's a, a great thing, but the reservations are a little bit different, or I should say um, they really don't have reservations. You call and kind of figure it out based on the place that you want to stay, so that's, that's a little bit trickier, but as we actually get the scamp back in like two weeks, hopefully we're going to try a harvest host. There's a few in our area. There's like uh, five or six actually right in South Jersey. So quite a few that we can do in less than an hour drive, which is very nice. So we'll let you know what our experience is with Harvest Hosts. I got the last of the Appalachian Trail maps glued onto the inside of that cabinet. And then I went over to the cabinet right by the door. And this is where I was putting our map of Shenandoah National Park, which is another really special place for me. This was the map that we got when we brought the scamp there in the fall. So it was one of the first trips that we got to do. We're getting into the final stages of cleaning and getting the scamp ready to go out for its first rental. It's getting picked up tomorrow. Um, one of the projects that I have to work on for today is to try to figure out how we can keep the shower drain from getting clogged. Because if you saw some of the older videos, one of the problems was that um, when you go into the bathroom, you're walking in from outside and you go into the bathroom and you're going to track in dirt no matter what. And we live in a, an area with really sandy soil, so there's always stuff getting tracked into here and it ends up clogging the drain. So we put a new little strainer in there, but what I want to do is make a plastic insert that's going to sit underneath the bamboo liner and that'll stay in when the shower is not being used and then you just take it out when the shower is being used and it'll take all that dirt and stuff out with it. So that's my idea anyway. I got a shower curtain and I just cut out a piece that'll fit the bottom of the shower and uh, we'll see if hopefully that fixes the issue. At this point we've had the plastic liner in our shower for all three of the rentals and the past two trips that we did with the scamp and I have to say it's working pretty well so far. There might be an easier way to do this, but this was quite effective at keeping the sand out of the drain. There's the piece that I cut out of the shower curtain and then I trimmed that down and formed it to the sides of the tub and then attached it with some Velcro there. So I put white Velcro on the tub. That way, when you take it out, it won't be as visible. Like that and hopefully that will contain some of the sand and dirt that gets tracked in but we will definitely find out how well it works on these next couple of rentals because they're both going to beach areas so at this point all of our little projects are pretty much done we just have to hang up the curtains on the door where I refinished over that scamp fur that's gonna be a little bit tricky because I didn't mark where the, the screw holes actually were to put everything back in. I should have thought about that, but 
I think I think we can figure it out. Now it's just a matter of cleaning everything really, really well, which I've kind of been cleaning all the way around, but uh, moving things and kind of cleaning in some of the other crevices that I didn't get to yet, like vacuuming out the insides of all the cabinets and um, all the corners. And then finally, the last thing is going to be cleaning the floor really well, because just walking in and out, the floor keeps getting dirty. So. That will be the last thing. Patrick just went to print out the paperwork that we need. There's like a, a check-in form where you walk around the camper with the person who's renting it and go over all the systems and make sure that they understand everything, their insurance policy, when they're bringing it back, all that kind of stuff. So while he's doing that, I'm going to keep cleaning. <laughs> Things being as they are right now with the pandemic, any sort of travel is difficult or impossible but that has really piqued people's interest in camping and RVs so I know there's a shortage of RVs for people who are trying to buy them and I think that has increased the interest in renting an RV and I definitely recommend that if you're thinking about buying to try it out first I think the question that a lot of you are probably wondering is why are we renting out the camper? And there's really a few different things to it. Um, the first one being that this is not a small investment. We've put a lot of money into this. And I mean, you can count the, the purchase price and then buying all the accessories that have to go with a camper. And then all of the things that we had to fix inside and outside and um, we put new tires and got the ball bearings and everything done. That was like over $500 just to get it ready for the season. So I know a lot of that is the upfront cost of like being new RV owners, but the reality is that we've put a considerable amount of money into this. Now, the second reality of the situation is that when you work full time, you don't have a lot of time to use the camper. It's really Saturday. I very, very seldom can get out of work early on Friday. I usually work late on Friday and I'm completely exhausted by the time that I get home. I don't want to do anything. So really my only viable day to do anything is Saturday, staying somewhere Saturday night for that one night. And what I've found, because we live in a shore area, it's really, really busy in the summer. In the summer and the spring and kind of the early fall are the times when most people would want to travel. That's when our jobs are the busiest and that's when we are the most tired. So as much as we really love going out and camping, we just can't do something every single weekend because we need certain weekends where we just stay home and decompress and catch up on chores and keeping the tiny house clean and things that we have to do around here because it just gets a little too hectic traveling all the time. So. After having some discussions and saying, look, we've put a lot of money into the camper, but we love the camper, to really make this a, a financially smart thing, we could rent out the camper and get some of that back. We're not going to really turn a profit on it, but to cover some of the cost of ownership. And the third part of this is kind of a little bit differently. Um, I'm. I'm nervous about the rental, but I'm also pretty excited. The first couple that is renting the camper have a one-year-old baby and they're really excited and they're going on their first vacation with their baby. So it's going to be a lot of really great memories for them in the scamp. And that makes me super happy that we could make that possible for people who love the scamp but don't own their own like we used to. I think that's really neat that we get to allow that to happen. So those are kind of the three things that we're working on right now in this whole process of seeing if doing this long term is something that's going to work for us. We really don't know. Trying it for the first time, so we'll see how it goes. When we got the scamp last year, our main idea was that we were going to be able to extend our outdoor season because we've been tent campers for a lot of years and we love tent camping because you can get into some really remote places that you can't get into with a camper, obviously. 
So we're not giving up tent camping, and that's usually what we do during the summer, but every year that we get older, it gets a little harder to sleep on the ground, and I'm a little bit less tolerant of bad weather. So the idea of having a camper and really being able to cook healthier food, that was a, a big thing. Having the fridge and having fresh food instead of the freeze-dried camping meals really was a big pull for me. But the scamp is really mainly for us to do things in the spring and in the fall so that we have a longer season. Look at that to-do list, all crossed off. The only thing we didn't do was try to fit the bug net on the outside awning. I don't know if it's gonna fit, but we'll try that another time. And we just need to get a couple extra cups, but that doesn't matter because the renters that we have taking the scamp tomorrow are using their own dishes, so we don't have to worry about that but really close. I just need to uh, clean the floor and a couple other things. Oh, I forgot to show you guys the, the noodle. So you see this, this is an extra thick pool noodle that is wedged in between the table and the wall. So what was happening was this table moves all over the place. When you're sitting at it, it's like constantly moving around and we were trying to figure out how we could fix that because it's really annoying. But you can't permanently fix it to the wall because it has to drop down onto these rails when you're using this as a sleeping area across there. Patrick was thinking about it and he saw this extra large pool noodle at the store and he cut it to fit right into that little spot so it works perfectly. The table is very stable now. Much nicer to sit out and eat, but we can still convert it to the bed. So little, little tricks. We also just replaced, or not we, Patrick, replaced three out of four of those outside running lights because they were burnt out. Actually, that's the one that we didn't replace. You can see this one's a little bit more orange. That's the new one. The great thing about Scamp is that anything that you need to fix or replace, you can order it directly from them. You know it's gonna fit. So that's brand new. It's a little brighter than the other one too, which is nice. The last thing I had to do to get the Scamp ready for the renter to pick it up the next day was to give the floor a very good scrub because it's amazing how dirty the floor gets just walking in and out, bringing things from here to there. But when it was done, I stepped back and looked at everything and I'm so happy with how everything turned out. It looks so cozy in there. And just as I was finishing cleaning, it started to thunder and we got a pretty heavy rain. I've got this towel from Patrick's mom as a little cute finishing touch for the scamp and the outside of the scamp got a nice wash so it was ready to go. If you are interested in our experience with renting out the scamp, I'll be doing a more detailed video in the future to let you know how everything went and if we're going to do it again at some point. Well, you worried about you and me, the injustice, the next president to be. The news and watch hear your career It's time for you to face those fears And it's all fair To be aware and I'll be there So don't be scared Just take a deep breath of air And one, two, three to ten You begin to focus again In the 